In this video, we'll be talking about the history of the secondary profession, cooking, in World of Warcraft, from its release in Vanilla WoW all the way to the present day in Shadowlands. Cooking was added right at the start of Alpha WoW all the way back in 2003 before even half of the original races were playable, and has gone through a number of changes, though remain relatively similar throughout. In Vanilla, as with all secondary professions, leveling it was not as simple as just going to a trainer, and there was no spiced bread to cook to get your skill to a quick 60. You had to get 9 boar meat or stringy wolf meat to get to 10 skill in cooking, then you could cook spiced wolf meat which would carry you all the way up to 50 cooking skill, and it would have to because the next recipe you learned from the trainer was boiled clams and coyote steak at skill 50, though this could be supplemented with specific cooking quests from both factions. Alliance, however, were heavily favored in this, as they had 14 faction-specific quests that gave them recipes while the Horde had 4. In fact, these quests, along with the cooking recipe vendor in Stormwind that sold the recipes from all these quests, has been often cited as an argument that Blizzard favors the Alliance over the Horde. Now, if you didn't want to level cooking the traditional way, you could also level it entirely through fishing all the way from 1 to 300. But that's pretty boring, so for the most part we'll stick to what the Cooks of Azeroth would train you in. After getting the previous two recipes at 50 skill, the next recipe you learned was crab cakes at skill 75, dry pork ribs at 85, goblin deviled clams at 125, and spider sausage at skill 200. That for both factions is all that you could train from the trainers. Just seven recipes, as most of your cooking recipes came as either world drops or from quests. Again, unless you were Alliance. As with fishing in vanilla, to learn expert cooking, it required you to go out into the world and find a vendor that sold the rather cleverly named book, Expert Cooking. This was another place that the Horde got a bit shafted with cooking. As for the Alliance, the book was sold in the Silverwind Refuge in Ashenvale, but for Horde, it was sold in Shadowprey Village in Desolus. And you see, the mobs in Ashenvale range from levels 18 to 30, while the Desolus mobs are level 30 to 40. So, the Horde had to wait a whole extra zone essentially to learn expert cooking, but that was probably okay as they had fewer options on what to cook. Especially if you were an orc or a troll as leveling in Durotar, there were no wolves, just lots and lots of boars. So you are pretty much just cooking boar meat all the way until skill 50 anyway. This does all even out when we get to the quest for artisan cooking however, as the quest Clamlet Surprise is a neutral quest that comes from Gadgetstan in Tarnaris which is a level 40 to 50 zone and requiring 10 giant eggs, 10 zesty clam meat, and 20 fine aged cheddar. And while you can buy the giant eggs off the auction house, they only drop from birds or owl beasts of above level 40. In patch 1.8, the minimum level requirement to get the quest was lowered to 35, but you'd still have a rough time actually getting the giant eggs if you wanted to farm them yourself. And even with the level decrease, you still had to have 225 cooking to get the quest. It was worth noting, however, that all the recipes that only the Alliance could get could be sold on the neutral auction house so that the Horde could use them too, as they weren't buying on pickup. And fun fact, this was the only way for the Horde to have any use at all for any kind of spider meat. So if you were leveling as a Horde character on Classic and are saving spider meat in your bags to later cook, don't. Unless you plan to visit the neutral auction house and try to buy a recipe. Cooking was very useful when leveling, unless you were a mage, as in vanilla you would often be at low health after fighting more than two mobs at a time, and it was also a good way to make money as cooked meats are worth usually twice as much uncooked when selling them straight to a vendor. A particularly useful recipe is jungle stew, which you can get in Stranglethorn Vale, and for just one tiger meat, one refreshing spring water, and two shiny red apples, you turn roughly one silver worth of ingredients into six. And this is a really good way to make money solo when you're nearing 40 and trying to get your first mount. In addition to the more traditional foods that healed you and gave you the well-fed buff, which in vanilla only lasted for 10 minutes. There were also a couple of special foods like the Deviant Delight, which you could turn into either a pirate or a ninja for an hour, though druids and shamans shifting from forms lose the effect, and before patch 2.3 in TBC, if a shadow priest switched shadow formed, they too would lose the effect. There was also a special recipe that only rogues could learn called Thistle Tea, which required 60 cooking and functioned like a potion, as, when used, it restored 100 energy. And it also required Swift Thistle to create, so really the only reason it wasn't crafted through alchemy was likely so that all rogues could pick it up, and not just alchemists. Last but not least, Vanilla had the one and only epic rarity food in the form of Dirge's Kickin's Chimera Chops, which were added in patch 1.9 
and were rewarded from one of the quests in the long chain to open the gates of AQ-40. Moving on to the Burning Crusade, cooking was increased to 375, and again you had to buy a book to learn the skill increase, with the Master Cookbook. But you didn't have a long journey to find it as it was sold from Chef Gatson and Baxter in each of the faction's main hub in Hellfire Peninsula. And unlike the recipes in Vanilla, in TBC all recipes had parody, as while they were still all learned from quests, each faction had the same quest, just from different people. And no, the Alliance did not have an extra vendor for these recipes. Both factions got spiced bread as an easy recipe to get to 60 skill as the materials required were bought from a vendor, rather than farmed like in vanilla. So the initial cooking grind was easier. However, you still had to go to Ashenvale or Desolus for expert cooking and do the quest in Gadget Sun for Artisan, so it was still a bit of a grind. The most impactful change to cooking at the time was the change in the duration of the well-fed buff you'd get for eating the various stat foods, as its duration was tripled from 10 minutes to 30. There was also some end game to cooking now, as some dailies were added to Shatrath in patch 2.3. They required level 70 to do, but only 275 cooking, which was pretty low considering most of them required Outland cooking recipes to actually accomplish. The reward for the quest was your choice between a barrel of fish or a crate of meat each of which had a chance to contain uncommon or even rare cooking recipes, like Kibler's Bits, which would make your pet bigger, or Storm Chops, which gave you a chance to deal some lightning damage to your target, even the delicious chocolate cake recipe, which could drop in the future which would be part of no less than three achievements, though those weren't added until later. With Wrath of the Lich King, the cooking scale increased from 375 up to 450, and with this, all the levels of cooking became trainable at the cooking trainer, so you no longer needed to go hunt down books in the world or do the quests in Gadget Sand. Gone were the days of learning your trade out in the open world. Centralization had come and now everything you needed was in the main cities. The other main change to cooking during Wrath was the addition of the fish feasts into the game. Today we all know them and use them quite often when raiding, but this was their introduction. The first one, called the Great Feast, was learned at 375 cooking from a trainer for 4 gold and 75 silver. As Wrath added all of the cooking levels to trainers, it also added many new recipes to them as well. As Wrath Cooking, or as it was called Grand Master Cooking, was learnable at skill 350, it added upwards of 20 new recipes between skill 350 and 375, in addition to the numerous recipes from 375 up to 450. This is a trend that would repeat itself throughout the next few expansions. However, where TBC had most of the base recipes behind quests, and the special recipes as random chances from the daily boxes, Wrath changed it up a bit, and in the Dollar Rand cooking dailies you got a chance at the rare recipes from TBC as well as currency. And for three of the currencies you could just buy the recipes from a vendor, which was a nice welcome change. In patch 3.2 they also added the recipe for the Captain Rumsey's Lager, which was originally only obtained through the bag of fishing treasures and outlands in TBC to both the cooking daily bags from Northrend as well as the crates of meats and barrels of fish from the Outland cooking dailies. And while the Outland cooking dailies required level 70 and only 275 cooking, the Northrend cooking dailies only required level 65, but 350 cooking. A bit of a strange choice, but hey, why not? Circling back to the topic of feasts, there are three others added. The fish feast, like the great feast, gave a bunch of stats, and again, Blizzard had buffed the well-fed buff, so it now lasted for a full hour. But the other two feasts are more interesting ones, these being the Small Feast and the Gigantic Feast. In the same vein as the Deviant Delight from Vanilla, either made you bigger or made you smaller. Though unlike the Deviant Delight, this one can be shared with all your friends. The last substantial change to cooking was now many of the foods actually restored mana as well as health. Previously, food would restore your health and drinks would restore mana, with only a few that did both. But now the majority of recipes you could do did both another quality of life feature added to the game through cooking. They also had a hat available from cooking for currencies which made your cooking time take about half a second each cast, being one of the most useful cooking items you could grab, even to this day. Cataclysm again brought new recipes to cooking along with the skill increase from 450 up to 525. As the Cataclysm didn't have a new continent but rather a new take on the old world, instead of making the new cooking dailies higher level, they took the entirely opposite track. Cooking dailies were added to the major cities and were now available from level 10, and gave a plus one cooking skill, as well as a new currency called Chef's Award. The cat cooking dailies did not give you a special bag to open with chances at recipes, but if you didn't want to farm cooking mats and just do dailies, for two of the Chef Awards you could buy a crate of tasty meat, which had Kata cooking reagents within. 
Given how short the Cataclysm segment was, you'd think we're over the hum when it comes to cooking. But this is not the case, as you may recall, Mr. Pandaria went and flipped cooking on its head. First, some of the more simple changes. The Dollar Rand Cooking Award and the Chef's Awards were all replaced with a central currency in the Epicurean Award, which could be obtained from both the Dollar Rand and Main City dailies as used for any of those recipes. And if you're wondering what Epicurean means, Epicure is one with sensitive and discriminating taste, especially in food or wine. The Valley of Four Winds is basically an entire zone dedicated to farming and, by extension, cooking. And the central hub, Half Hill Market, added a whole system to cooking. With a Sunsong Ranch, you could now grow your own materials, and there was a whole quest line and reputation related to that. But also, much like the crafting professions of vanilla, you could now choose different ways to learn each with their own recipes. And once you completely leveled up one, you could start on another. And when you leveled all six ways, you earned the title Master of the Ways. Also, unlike in the previous expansions, you could now level up cooking from 1 to 600 all in the Half Hill Market, as they had recipes that required only vendor items and could teach you all the way up to 525, at which point they started to require mats from Pandaria. Mrs. Pandaria also gave us a new currency for use in the Half Hill Market called the Iron Paw Token, with which you could buy a three-piece set of an apron, a rolling pin, and a frying pan, which when all equipped, it gave you a plus 30 cooking skill. Though unlike the bonuses to fishing skill, you don't really get a bonus from the cooking skill. It's not like you make extra food with a higher cooking skill or anything, but still an interesting bonus to have nonetheless. You could also buy the portable refrigerator, a 32 slot cooking bag, but the most interesting thing that the Half Hill Market gave us was our first interaction with Nami. In Mr. Pandaria, Nami was a child who you mentored into becoming a chef, and you could buy the cooking student bell, which would allow you to summon him. And while nowadays he is so much of a meme that Blizzard has used him as a boss in stress tests, at this point in time he was just a child. Warlords of Draenor brought cooking up from 600 to 700, and for the first time since Wrath, you had to go out into the world to learn this expansion's cooking. Basically, for all the professions in Warlords of Draenor, you got the scrolls to learn their highest level from random mob drops. But the chance was really high, so it was really easy to get them. And fun fact, cooking along with archaeology and first aid are the only professions that didn't get a garrison building dedicated to them. But really, there wasn't much added to cooking, the same type of basic recipes used for high-end content. As we returned to our world for the Invasion of Legion, cooking increased from 700 to 800, and we ran into our old student from Mr. Pandaria, Nami. Legion added a new system cooking, with each recipe now giving three ranks, from one star to three stars. And for cooking, this meant the higher ranks allowed you to make more of the food for the same amount of materials. In addition to this, it had an interesting way to increase the ranks of your recipes. Instead of dailies like in the past, which would give you all the currency, instead you would farm cooking mats and then give them to your old student who was all grown up, in stacks of five, and he would spend an hour or so researching it, and then you could open a box that would either have some food and a recipe in it, or burnt food scraps, and far more often than not, you would just get the burnt food, which began the meme that Nami was basically just Ragnaros, and for a stress test on the 7.2 PTR, Blizzard let loose Fire Lord Nami on the streets of Dalaran, letting players finally take out their frustrations on their former student for his innumerable failures. There were a couple of interesting recipes from Legion, however. Everyone knows and mourns the bear tartar that was nerfed in BFA, but fewer talk about the interesting ideas that the crispy bacon added, where if you had a food buff and ate a slice of crispy bacon, it increased the duration of the well-fed buff by an hour, all the way up to six hours max. Although it only works on food from Legion, so unfortunately it doesn't work anymore. But you do get an achievement for getting a well-fed buff all the way up to 6 hours. Battle for Azeroth changed how professions worked. Instead of going from 800 to 900 or something, it broke professions up to be by expansion. So now you had vanilla cooking, TBC cooking, wrath cooking, and so on and so forth. It also retrained the 3 rank system of Legion, and the 5, 7, 10 amount per recipe. There were a few interesting recipes, like the Hearts Bane's Hexwurst, which like the deviant fish in vanilla, transformed you into a pig-headed beastman, which maybe isn't quite as cool as a ninja or a pirate. Also, with the release of Mechagon, cooks could now make the Mecha Dolls Big Mech, a clear reference to McDonald's. And with Nyalatha and the Visions of Nazoth scenarios, there were a few extra recipes that helped you in those specifically, but for the most part, business as usual. Raid buffs. Finally, in Shadowlands, cooking has a 75 skill to level through. They removed the three rank system from cooking, and that's pretty much it. A couple of feasts, a large and small version of every stat food, but the one welcome addition is the fried bonefish, 
which while not as strong as Bear Tartar, is still a nice option for those in old content wanting to speedrun through it. Unlike first aid, cooking is still very widely used even today because of the extra stat buffs it gives. So while its systems are a bit old and maybe even outdated, it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Alright, and that's the video. If you liked it, make sure to give it a like, and if you have any ideas for future videos just like this one, be sure to leave them in the comments down below. Or if you want to watch more videos about the history of WoW, check out the playlist where I have all of my history videos which can be watched conveniently back to back.